Welcome back. The Biden administration is cracking down on the nation's most pressing issue. They're making headlines once again for preposterous plans to put red tape on ceiling fans. All in the name of energy efficiency, right? Yet again, the regulations are being put on the consumers and not the manufacturers. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me this is absolute garbage. If they were serious about any of this, the administration would take on ending planned obsolescence. And by that, I mean how products are purposefully designed to break or become obsolete within a short amount of time. Think about it. Did your refrigerator from 1960 ever go out? Heck, it's probably still running. They certainly don't make them like they used to. And why is that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, because it's more profitable for the manufacturers, aka big business, and their buds in the government, if they ignore the real issue while spinning the narrative to generate consent for increasing taxes. The ceiling fan debacle is just the latest slap in the face from the reprehensible Biden administration. Joining us now, founder of Climate Depot and author of The Great Reset, Mark Morano. Thanks for being with us, Mark. It's great to have you back. Thank you, Allison. Happy to be here. So, Mark, I'm beginning to lose track of everything Biden wants to deprive us all of. <laughs> I mean, all in, saving, all in the name of saving the planet, too, right? If I remember correctly, it started with uh, eliminating stoves and water heaters and pizza ovens and light bulbs, and now it's ceiling fans. Mark, has the attack on the middle class ever been more apparent? No, I mean, this is a wholesale attack on America, on the middle class, on the working class, on anyone who's not in the top 1%. <clears throat> and it goes beyond <clears throat> just the ceiling fans. We have the car, gas car bans. We have John Kerry now putting agriculture in his sights, going specifically after high yield agriculture fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer, going after animal meat eating and livestock with methane restrictions coming out. Uh, you have New York City going after pizza ovens. You have the uh, Mayor Bloomberg report saying three new items of clothing per, per, per year, per person per year by 2030. <laughs> I mean, this is a wholesale agenda that they were emboldened by the COVID lockdowns beginning in March of 2020 and the emergency power that abuse that happened with mayors and governors and prime ministers around the world, and and also our own President Biden. And they are just going full bore to so the point now, Allison, where every day we wake up, we find some new unelected bureaucrat has decided to ban something else. Don't forget, just about three weeks ago, Biden went fully forward with the ban on incandescent light bulbs as well. So those are now illegal contraband. There is no end. They're trying to control, regulate and mitigate every aspect of our lives because they truly believe that we're the unwashed masses and left to our own devices will create racism, inequity, destroy the planet and create a climate crisis. And so it's their job. They're the anointed few who can, who can literally save humanity from itself. And that's why they're trying to control our lives like this. It's really the driving ideology behind this. It really, truly is. And I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people get so caught up in this left-right paradigm, but we have to realize it's these globalist yeah. elites who are at the head of this, who are going to turn us all into slaves. So uh, <laughs> we better stand up and resist it at all costs before we actually do. Mark, what are some of the implications of switching over to these so-called energy efficient uh, ceiling fans or just all of these appliances that they want to make energy efficient? Uh, and how will this impact not only the American people, but also, you know, the manufacturers? Well, it's supposed to save it. They always bill everything as energy efficiency. So what, that's up to like $40 million a year, but then it's going to cost like $100 billion a year or almost eight, $90 billion million a year with increased uh, manufacturing costs associated with this. So first of all, it's going to hammer small businesses. And there's a Republican committee on small businesses in Congress that's writing a letter to Energy Secretary Granham pointing this out. The math makes no sense on this, as it does with anything else, even with electric cars. We're going to do electric cars to save the planet. Oh, really? With cobalt and all the rare earth mining and reliance on China with the lowest human rights. None of it makes any sense. Same thing is happening here. All it's going to do is add huge regulations. What's going to happen to the small, and there's a lot of small American ceiling fan manufacturers and other fans. What's going to happen to them? They're going to get bought out by big corporate conglomerates. And that's, guess who's pushing 
all of this, all of these regulations, the big corporate entities that know that when the smaller ones can't handle the cost, they can gobble them up and you have more and more concentration into fewer and fewer people. The corporations then collude with the government and then you end up with where we are today, big tech government collusion, big business government collusion. And it's just, it's the, it's the great reset, if you will, in action. We're watching it with something as innocuous sounding as a ceiling fan. Yep, you are exactly right, and it's just so sickening to watch. I think it's quite clear this is just yet the latest example of the Biden regime placing ideology, really, over the comfort and well-being of we the people. They clearly don't care about us, and they don't care about small business. The only thing they really care about is pushing their nonsensical, radical green agenda. Case in point, those disgusting paper straws that the liberals incessantly yes. push for that dissolve in your mouth and turn into mush after literally three sips, all to save the turtles, right? And uh, we know how well those worked. Uh, it turns out that these paper straws may actually be more harmful to not only humans, but the environment than the plastic straws that we were all just fine drinking out of. Mark, can you explain this to us? Tell us more about this new study. Yes, this is actually a study, and this is in the mainstream journals. This isn't sort of like some, you know, uh, dissident science blowing the whistle. This is reported in physics.org, which is a huge mainstream corporate outlet. They may be more harmful because of these forever chemicals that are in them when they make them. And they actually increase the risk of cancer in humans, so they're detrimental to humans and they're detrimental to the environment when they're making them. It's turning out plastic straws should never have been banned. They weren't more efficient. They made no environmental sense. They made no public health sense, but it doesn't matter. So many jurisdictions banned plastic straws in favor of these straws that dissolve in your mouth. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, this is just typical of the entire green movement. They go for that narrative building headline, just like we're gonna do windmills to save the planet and the hell with what happens to whales. You know, they'll kill the whales as environmentalists in order to save the planet with windmills, which don't produce energy and can't possibly reduce emissions. And it's the same exact thing that happened with the plastic straws. But so let's hope this study can bring some semblance of sense, at least in the beverage and, and plastic straw world. We'll see if the plastic can make a comeback in this nonsense of these eco straws can just fade away. I certainly hope so because I don't know about you, but I am sick of swallowing my straws and especially knowing that there's forever chemicals in them. I think the tip off for everyone should have been when they were handed their paper straw wrapped in plastic. That should just show you how idiotic the entire yes. thing is. <laughs> And also the same people pushing no plastics were pushing all the plastic masks made of plastic and we have landfills filled with them and oceans and they didn't seem to care about that one whit. They wanted that compliance, that the symbol that you were going along with the, you know, the narrative. That's all they cared about. And that's basically what they care about with plastic straws. They just want to, they do almost do these things because they know they can yep. and they're messing with us. They know it's <laughs> bull bleep from the beginning. But because they have the power, they want to use it. They sure do. And then they're looking down on us and laughing while they drink out of their plastic straws and us peasants yeah. have paper straws. And drink from their... <laughs> so many climate activists have been at congressional hearings with a bottle of plastic water next to them just, uh, just to mock the whole, the whole message that they give. It is utterly ridiculous. Mark Marano, we're out of time for today, but thank you so much for joining us. Always appreciate your time. Thank you, Allison. Appreciate it. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard-hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech, by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected with like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button to get the news you can't get anywhere else.